Hey YouTube, Williams JP 2004 back here for our revision on our previous wiring diagram for the 1992 Nissan 240SX. Basically what we did here is we just made it a little bit more reliable by adding a second relay in the schematic. There are a few more wires it looks like you might need to go ahead and put a couple more grounds in. I think overall we might have used two or three more wires that we had to make, but we could even, we even scavenge those from previous ones that we used for this same project. So it shouldn't be too difficult if you've already done this to change it up a little bit. Pin 1 remains the power source to the switch, so that hasn't changed any there. The switch also powers after it's flipped on. Pin 2, 12 volt positive to the keypad and common on the keypad's built-in relay. So again, that hasn't changed from the previous schematic. What has changed is that the switch does not power pin 30 on the other relay, on the first relay that we had in the last schematic anymore. So that's, uh, that's actually powered by another source. We'll go over that here in just a second. The normally open on the keypad's built-in relay does still connect to pin 85 on the relay 1, uh, and pin 86 on relay 1 is still grounded, so that hasn't changed there again. Pin 87 is still connected to pin 3 and one side of the switch. Now, what we've done differently here is instead of going to pins 4 and 5 directly from the switch, we've added another little deal, and I've actually forgotten to add something here, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this for just a second, and I'll get right back to you. All right, we are back with the uh, correction here. I did forget to add a chassis ground to pin 86 on relay 2. So that's the only thing here. Uh, pin 85 is connected to the other side of the push switch. Pin 86 is grounded, just like in the other relay. And pin 30 does have constant power from another source, again, just like the other relay. So there's really not much difference between either one of these relays. The difference in this schematic is that now these relays are both powered by a constant positive power from your battery okay to pin 30 that's not going to charge anything again because we're leaving pin 87a open on either relay so there shouldn't be any power being drawn from the battery when everything is turned off okay what's going to happen here is uh, we're going to connect now pin 87 on relay 2 to pins 4 and 5 on the ignition harness and basically what that's going to allow us to do is whenever we push the push button instead of letting the power go straight through the push button and corroding the contacts on the push button it's going to go from the push button to again pin 85 on the relay pin 86 will be grounded and what that's going to do is use the push button to turn on this relay which will give us a more stable source of voltage across pins four and five so it just gives us a more reliable startup again like i posted a, an annotation on my last video if you haven't read it go back and read it if you'd like basically what it says is that we've made it more reliable because of this um and uh we have a hundred percent so far we're at a hundred percent first start uh, on the push button, whereas in the last schematic that we had, it was kind of shoddy. So this has just added a little bit of reliability and um, more stability to the system. So we're going to go over this one more time again because I am a confirmation whore and I like to make sure that I get things right and explain them in detail. We do still have pin 1 hooked up to the switch on one side. Again, not changed from the last schematic. The power from the switch. After you activate the switch, we're getting power to pin 2, 12 volt positive on the keypad, and common on the keypad's built-in relay. Again, that has not changed from the previous schematic. Don't forget to ground the keypad. You do still need that in order to get power to the keypad. Normally open on the keypad's built-in relay is still connected to pin 85 on a relay. This is We're going to refer to this one as relay 1. Relay 1 is also grounded at pin 86. That's going to allow you to, whenever you punch in the keypad number here, uh, to get you know the the relay activated here it's going to charge this relay and allow you to have power to pin three and to the push switch okay again that has not really changed from the last schematic the biggest uh, change on this on the last schematic is that the battery from your car is now charging pin 30 on relay one instead of the switch okay so after you turn on the keypad your normally open circuit will close and give you power to this relay one here uh, and that will go ahead and give you the on state on the key, the second rotation as you were emulating here. And again, battery is now on pin 30 on relay 1 and not the switch to uh, pin 30 on relay 1. Um, so this is all looking pretty much the same. And then the biggest change that we've provided here again is we've added one relay. This relay is also powered from your battery. You can see here you can follow the little wire. Uh, pin 30 is you know, constant from your battery's positive terminal. And again, this does not drain power as long as the circuit's not active, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. What's going to happen is now this the push button switch that we used to start the car in the previous 
schematic that went straight to pins 4 and 5, we're going to let the relay do that work for us. So it's a little bit better of a connection, it's a little bit more reliable, and uh, you know, you just check it out for yourself. So the push button is going to give power to pin 85 on the on relay 2. This one will be referred to as relay 2. And relay 2, pin 86, is grounded to chassis ground. Pin 87 is connected to pins 4 and 5 on the ignition harness so that uh, whenever you push the button, it'll charge the relay and it'll give power to pin 87 on relay 2, and which will in turn power pins 4 and 5 on your ignition harness. So again, if there's any questions, guys, don't hesitate to drop me a comment, ask me a question. Um, you can, uh, you know, directly message me, however all that works, you know, depending on where you're watching this from. And uh, again, I love to do videos on this kind of stuff. This is just what I love to do. So, you know, ask as many questions as you want. Again, I'd love to get back to you. So if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. All right.